What up, though, everybody? It's your boy Tristan, a.k.a. T. Just knocked out the interview with The Forum Magazine, man. Make sure y'all tap in. The Forum Magazine, Detroit, baby, we out here. You see what's going on? We activated, we ain't playing no game. Yo, 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 man. It's GX from The Forum Magazine, man. And um, just to start off, man, we're going we gonna to start this one off right, man, because, you know, everybody know Detroit been super lit right now. And uh, on, in so many facets, uh, musically, primarily, you know, what I mean, that's acknowledged damn near worldwide now at this point. You know, we done came a long way on the music side of things. But um, from from me doing my research and my studies, man, the, the, the film industry hasn't been this right in Detroit since roughly like the 60s and 70s and stuff like that. Wow. Um, so for. The, the the impact of the movie and the film industry to be where it is is amazing. But today, man, we got somebody that's making waves in this industry. You know what I mean? Somebody that people are now actually, you know, seeking after seeing you in some of these films. Um, We got none other than, than Tristan in the building, man. How you doing, bro? Can't complain, man. Glad to be here, man. Bless. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir, man. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you. You know what I mean? We know you've been putting in a lot of work. So just for you to take a little bit of time out your schedule to rock with us, commendable and we appreciate it, bro. Ain't no, ain't no sweat off my back, man. This family, so. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. No doubt, no doubt, man. It's been a hell of a year so far, man. Hell yeah, man. I'm, hey, look, uh, 23 has been nothing but beautiful things. Uh, even the bad shit turned out in a, in a good way. So, you know, when the bad worked for the good, you know you – you on the right path. For I'm sure, just for looking sure. for it, uh, 24, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. When you came into this year, you know everybody had a New Year's resolutions and different things that they, you know, set as goals. When you came into this year, um, me looking at some of the things that you've accomplished this year, some of the films that you've done this year, did you anticipate having this type of uh, reaction and accomplishing these type of goals that you've accomplished thus far in 2023 did you did you have that in mind coming into this year um maybe not as much as it did i'm very intentional so i knew that you know all this thing all these things were going to come eventually but i just didn't know where yeah. so but you know the sooner the better no doubt no yeah. doubt man and, and just for the people to know man like you got this movie, man. Her husband's enemy. Mm -hmm. Fire. Y'all actually just dropped that probably like what a couple months ago. About well, how long ago did y'all drop that? August August fourth. August. August. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you got that. Um, power and money. Yeah. You know what I mean. And power and money also had Fat Boy SSE in it. Mm -hmm. Um, along with uh DeAndre Bonds. Yeah. Um, and you know, man, DeAndre, he a legend, man. Right. Um. I, for me, for some reason, I heard him talk about it before. I can't get that one scene out my head. It was such an emotional scene in that one movie that he played in. What was I don't, it called? Uh, with locked the jail, up. locked up. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, but but for him to, you know, what I mean, do that movie and act that out the way he did, man, he a great actor. You feel me? A legend or whatever. How was it working with them guys? You know, what I mean, on the scene of uh, Power and Money. Um, I'm gonna tell you, uh, Fat Boy is a raw talent, man. He is, uh, he's teachable, he's coachable, um, no ego, uh, all love, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, the, that's Fat Boy. Uh, DeAndre Bonds, man, he is a consummate professional. Um, what I liked about him is like, he don't have no, no gray area. You know, when some people get on indie films, they don't want to put everything into that mm -hmm. indie film because it's, they feel like it's just, it's, you know, going on Tubi or what have you. Gotcha. But he gave us the same type of vibe that he was when he was on Snowfall, wow. you know, so. And then with him, it's like, what you see on the internet and it's, it's him. Like, he always going to show up and he ain't giving you no fake shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He, um, it's him. And that's hard too. I like it literally slipped my mind that he definitely played his snowfall and played a, a hell of a role mm -hmm. in that. Um and, and so you just talked about some of the uh things that you picked up from him. What what was like some other intricate details like from from a actor's pers perspective that you saw him do 
that you took with yourself and said, you know, I'm going to start implementing some of this shit into my, you know what I mean, into my uh, stuff. Like, just really, really um, feel the character. Like, don't hold back. Like, if you got to if you got to cry, you got to, you know what I'm saying? Cry. If it's a hurt scene, you hurt, you be hurt. You know what I'm saying? And like every, every take, uh, he got shot in the movie. Like the scene where he was trying to plead his case to, to the brother. It was like, everything was like, it was like, it was real. You know what I'm saying? And that's what like, go all in. You know what I'm saying? For Don't sure. hold back. For sure. And let that director tell you to either dial it back or turn it up. So right, you know right, right. That makes sense. That but makes yeah, sense. so that's what I learned from him. That makes yeah. sense. And also this year, man, you had the pleasure to be a part of something monumental, man. J- just to highlight the real story of Miss Tonisa Welch, the first lady of BMF. And, um, you know, you played uh, you played Beach in it. And mm-hmm. for the longest, man, we all been, you know what I mean? Right. We all been looking at like you've been tailor made for that. Um, you know, for that uh, acting job for the longest. And I remember last time we had a conversation, you talked about damn near throughout your whole career. Yeah. You've been preparing Mm -hmm. for this moment. Yeah. So how was it like actually fulfilling that man and and, and doing the job that you, because you did a hell of a job. You feel me? So how was it like? Uh, it was, to me, it was like the universe was telling me like, good job you did what you supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Because I, like I said a, m- a moment ago, I'm very intentional. And when you uh, do everything that you're supposed to do, leave no stone unturned, this is the result. So, I man, it was just like, it was just one of those surreal moments. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, universe, I hear you. Sure. I hear you. So, um, like I said, I've been preparing for so long that when it was time for me to do it, it was like, shit, I was already, I was already prepared. So, in that, in that mind state, I was like, that was cool, but I was most definitely excited. I got to work with Vivica Fox, right. um, some of the legends like uh, Leon, uh, Laura from yeah. Family Matters. Yeah. So I was like just seeing all these people that I, I watched and, and and I admired their craft. It was a, a surreal moment, man. No, nah, definitely, man. And then like even when you say Leon, man, you know, we go back to that David Ruffin. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, so we we talking about elite actors you get what i'm saying like people that's been doing this for years and you know these are some of the people that you had an opportunity to be close to and work around bro so that's like super dope um and we're gonna go more into that man but mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna back it up a little bit man okay. so that the people can kind of understand and know who you are you feel me mm-hmm. so if you can bro take us into them early beginnings man and your your upbringing in detroit man just tell Tell the people a little bit about where you from and, and just what was it like growing up in Detroit for you? Um, okay, so mainly I grew up on the east side, uh for the most part of my childhood, off East Warren and Casu. Uh me, my sister, my mother, and then my stepfather later on. And uh, I had a pretty much uh a normal childhood, man. I, I sat in the bed one day and I I really thought about my life. Like I haven't really experienced nothing that was traumatic in my lifehood, you know, in my childhood. And um, so I had a, a, a basic child. I love playing basketball. Um, I love being a class clown. I, for some reason, I always had that entertainment, mm-hmm. wanted to be an entertainer uh, somewhere in the back of my mind. So it's not it's not a surprise to me that this is what I'm doing right now. Um, I went to Cash Tech. Uh, Ended up going to the military, had kids, started a family. Oh, at you it. went to the military? Yeah, I was in the Marines. Um, started a family at a young age. and Hold on. If we can, before the, like, if, if you don't mind. You know, with that military come a whole different type of discipline. Mm-hmm. How old were you when you when you got into the to the military? 18. 18. Yeah. Was that a culture shock for you when you actually went? Uh, no, because my stepfather... <laughs> He was a Marine, God. and he was uh he was born in 1936, bro. So he went wow. to the Marine Corps in 1954 when he turned 18, and the Marine Corps was totally different than it was right now. Like the Marine Corps now is soft as opposed to wow. back then. Like they was doing all type of crazy ass shit. Gosh. You know what I'm saying? To the so when I when I grew up with that type of uh that type of uh, father figure in yeah. the household, bro. Yeah. It was like, I was already in the Marine Already, court. yeah, I was, straight You know up. what I'm saying? And so uh, I pretty much went because I didn't want nobody to t- say that they was taking care of my son. You know what I'm saying? Mm. This, I got my oldest son with me right now. Um, and I wanted to provide him benefits and, and get him all that type of stuff. And I really didn't know how outside of that. I knew if I went and did that, that 
you know what I'm saying? He'd get them benefits immediately. Most know? definitely. Sure. Most definitely. But so, yeah, I was I was in the military before I was in the military. Straight up. Yeah. Straight up. And so when you say, man, when you go back and you look and you say, damn, I ain't really experience you know like some of them super traumatic experiences and shit mm-hmm. like that um number one that's a blessing yeah you know exactly. what i mean a lot of people deal with and we all got flaws and we all got mm-hmm. stuff that we but some of that shit be so deep that it actually come in between the person dreams it comes in between the person go it comes in between relationships that you got with other people um so would you contribute a part of that success that a part of the success that you got and not like, you know, being hard to work with and stuff like that. Would you contribute that to your parents and your upbringing? Yeah. But just to touch on what you said, too, like traumatizing experiences, it triggers the fight flight, fight or flight uh, part of your brain. So some people excel with, you know what I'm saying, those. It, it propels them. And some people, it you know what I'm saying, it make them digress. Like if you look at 50 Cent for it, example, that he lost his mom at a young age. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? It's just the psyche. It, it just changes like people do it seems like people do more or less or you know what i'm saying so um yeah but what was the question the, uh, or yeah, do, what i attribute yeah, yeah i was definitely attribute yeah for sure so when you uh so you said you always was a class clown to some degree or you you always seen yourself being in the entertainment you know what i mean industry um uh, at what age did you really kind of see that you could possibly do this in my 30s mm when they um so like I said before, back in like two thousand twelve, maybe a year or two early or give or take a year or two, um, I said I was gonna play Big Meech, you know what I'm saying? Not knowing that fifty cent was gonna get the the rights to none of that shit, bro. I had a cane corso, a dog that I bought and I named him Meech. You know what I'm saying? That's and that's just like to speak, like I said, I'm very intentional. Yeah. So when they said that shit, I had to fucking do it. You know what I'm saying? I think I forgot the question again. What was the question again? I think the question was, uh, um, uh, I think I said, what, um, what, uh, what age did you? You said oh, in yeah. your thirties. I yeah, said so, what age? Did, yeah. yeah. So when they when they when they created the uh, the series or whatever, I said I was going to uh, to, to to make myself as as formidable as an actor as I could. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I that's what I did. Real you know talk. What I'm so and that was in my thirties. So it took me thirty something years to figure out what I wanted to be when I grow up. Real talk, real yeah. talk, and then look at the success now, nah, bro. Mm-hmm. So it's like, and, and, and you still rising. Like, if you really know, like, if you know, you know. Right. If you don't, then you're going to find out. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the man is working, man. So um, speaking of 50 Cent, um, I actually saw a while back where he actually commented on, you know what I mean, you in the whip or whatever, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, throwing yeah. up the BMF sign, you know, and in yeah. real form with it. Yeah. And he responded, you getting ready or something along yeah. those lines. Yeah, he was getting ready. Yeah. 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 Um, he saw you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure by him commenting, he saw potential. Oh yeah, most definitely. In you. Mm-hmm. Um, why why didn't it happen? Me personally, I think it's a. Uh... Not, not to say this in a bad way. Respectfully, it's nepotism. Um, there was a guy that I believe that Tasha Smith uh, know that was uh, that she had worked with before, and uh, people work with people who they feel more comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's like the that's like the only reason. Like at that particular time, yeah, he had more skin in the game than I did. He was more familiar with the people who was producing it. And so that's who they that's who they went with, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But hey, man, it's funny. It's just crazy how if you just stick with what you're doing, man, and work at it, bro. And no dis- no shade to him, and no disrespect to the guy who got the role, but it's like uh, I-, I can't say it, I'm more popping than he is right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we don't even know who he is. Can't nobody even tell you who this guy is. Nah, real you tough. know what I'm saying? Real so uh, if you just you know what I'm saying? Stick to it. Be resilient. Don't give up. Like I said, be intentional. You know what I'm saying? Don't. It's a uh, it's a rule called three feet from gold in the uh, Think and Grow Rich book. Uh, book, and they're pretty much saying like, just when you get ready to, to uh, strike rich, you you feel like you uh, like you had enough and you want to quit. You know what I'm saying? And it's a guy in the book who actually did that. Like he was three feet from. This is where the term come from. He was three feet from gold. And he quit digging. He had bought this machine, and, and he ended up selling the machine to a, a junk mm-hmm. man. 
And so what the junk man did was he went and found somebody who knew how to work the machine. And he actually struck the gold that the other guy Damn. was trying to get. Damn. And all he did was hire somebody who, who knew how to work the machine, who was an expert at working the machine. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't quit on your dreams. You keep on fucking going. I don't care how bad, you know what I'm saying, it look for you. Just keep fucking going. No Valuable point. lesson, man. Yeah. Valuable lesson, man. And, you know, even with you, like, so far, man, you already been kind of dropping a lot of subtle jewels, man. Like, how important is, like, you know, studying and, and, and reading books and, you know, just, just educating yourself? How important is that to you? You just seem well, well educated. Um, shit, that is very important, bro. Um, you only as big as the world that you expose yourself to. You know what I'm saying? At, when you become a certain age, you can't blame your parents for your upbringing. You know what I'm saying? You got to take responsibility for your life. And I'm just real big on learning. I hate not knowing. You know what I'm saying? I hate not knowing. So um, I just try to make myself a sponge. And 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 that, just, and that helped me in so many different ways, too. It's like, man, sure. I pick up on stuff, stuff so easily, you know? Most so, definitely. But you got to read, bro. Yes, sir. So, so, all right. So going back into the journey, cause I kind of like, I kind of like to time frame things leading all the way up to where we at right now. And so one of the important things that you, you spoke of was going to the Marines. Um, you know, you had your son, then you went to the Marines. At what year did you come back out of the Marines and coming from, you know, the Marines back into, you know, because a lot of people liken the Marines into jail. Right. Like, like you know what I mean? They, they, I hear, I actually talked to somebody that said, I don't know if he in the Marines or Army or what, but he keep on saying, when I get out, you know what I mean? Like, when I get out, I'm a do 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 as if he in a joint or something. Yeah. Um, what, what was the biggest transition, um, you know, coming from there, you know, back with your family and all of that stuff, back with your son, just everything. I'm going to touch on two things. When you're in there, it's pretty. It's not like you're in jail because you live a regular life. You go to work and you come home just like you do here. But the, th the difference is, like, you signed your life over to them. So whatever they tell you to do, you have to do it. I don't give a fuck if it's breaking brick rocks down into little rocks all day long, every day. You know what I'm saying? This is what you have to do. Um, the transition, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult. Um. I'm gonna say I I didn't get out and I didn't do the right things when I when I got out. I got out and I started getting into the street shit. You know what I'm saying? Start making all the wrong decisions, not applying myself when I know um, I was way smarter than making the decisions that I was making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it was some it was some um, lessons I learned when I when I got out. You know what I'm saying? Caught a couple of felonies, um, which I can probably say I got those felonies expunged. That's what's up. Um, Made some mistakes, um, created some more children, um, and um, it was just like back to the back to the back to Detroit. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? Where, you hustle, the, yeah, where, you, where you got to find your niche. You know straight what I'm saying? Up. So I started um, doing floors, hardwood floors, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you get into that because I was gonna ask. Like, you had to try mm -hmm. a bunch of different shit before you say, "Damn, I got it. This is what yeah. we about to do." Yeah. So yeah, you said you was doing floors. And yeah, floors. Um, I, I love to do that, but I, I, I'm i such of a hard worker. Like, I burnt myself out because I like to get my money in a day or so. So I was doing people's complete houses in maybe, like, three days tops. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I burnt. And I, then I was doing majority of the work by myself Yeah, because it's it's hard to find good help and it's hard to train people um, and, you know, just find, just find good help. So I was doing that, and then um, I became a horticulturalist. You said a what? A horticulturalist. What's that? <laughs> uh, oh, like what? A hoarder? No, I grow oh. weed. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Hey, I should have known though, because even by the lingo, like you yeah. came in talking about some this four twenty friendly in yeah. here, like only we only uh connoisseurs. Yeah, <laughs> like and, uh, that. Yeah. And then um, I did that, and then when, like I said, when Fifty Cent announced that um, he had BMF, man, I hired me an acting coach and. Start just knocking shit history. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, um, acting coach. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people. I, I don't think a lot of people start off that way. They kind of just try to figure it out on their own and just do their own uh research. Um, what what acting coach did you get, and um, how helpful was he or she? Uh, his name is Henri Franklin. He was actually one of my uh, classmates in cast. Um. 
he was very instrumental, man. Um, some of the game that he taught me to this day is what gets me roles. You like a uh, shit with BMF with um, first lady of BMF. My very first role, which was weight, I went in there and I knocked that bitch out the park. This is how me and Beezy Jones met, which is my business partner right now. Shout out to Beezy. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he was like, uh, "You for sure gonna get a call back." And it's like, I and I everything that he was teaching me, my coach was teaching me while I was waiting outside that waiting room. I'm hearing people make those mistakes. Mm. I'm like, oh yeah, he too loud. He, you know what I'm saying? And film, you have to be small. You know what I'm saying? You can't be big. You got to be small because all your acting is pretty much from here. You know what I'm saying? From here to here. Got you. When you on stage, you can be big. Got you. Pause. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because so, everybody, everybody got to hear you from. All the way into the last row, you know what I'm saying. So that's why it's more you taking more for uh, more of the stage. You you using your hands, more yeah. body language. When you're acting, you're not doing all of that. You know what I'm saying. Pretty much, you on the mark unless you you moving with a purpose. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. So, um, man, he was very instrumental. Um, yesterday, I had a casting call, and I'm seeing I'm seeing all these people make mistakes, like same mistakes. Like when you have a good teacher, mm -hmm. you hear them in your head when when you see people do certain things. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying. So. I'm seeing people make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? One guy came in and he shook everybody's hand that was at the casting table. And you would think like, that's what you're supposed to do. Come in there and introduce yourself. No, I don't nobody. People, if they shook everybody's hand that came in, you know how many germs they would come in contact with? Like people not, they don't want to shake a thousand hands. True, you know what I'm saying? True. You come, if people gesture and they welcome that, then you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You oblige. But just little subtle things like that, that you, know, that, like you know not to do. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, okay, bam, you got the acting coach, um, gained a lot of experience, uh, from him. Uh, first, first gig, I think you mentioned it. What, what was the, that was the weight? Weight. Weight. Mm -hmm. Um, overall, when you reflect back, because you've done a lot of films since then, mm -hmm. when you reflect back on weight, what would you rate yourself? Like, what, what would you, you know what I mean? Rate your performance. On, on weight? Yeah. Cause like even with artists, uh, not I ain't mean to cut you off, but even with artists, like when they do older music, they go back and like, man, that shit was trash, bro. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get into the mind of a of an actor. You get what I mean? Just to see, like, do you critique yourself uh, as hard when you look back on your older films? Uh, most definitely. Um, even my films that that's today is like shit. You know what I'm saying? You could have prepared a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm very hard on myself in that sense. But I think um, I had I, I I understand the fact that I was in the, in the beta stages. I was in my infancy in acting, so I allow myself that yeah, grace, yeah, you know what which I'm is saying? important. Be, yeah, not to be that. But now, knowing what I know now, you know what I'm saying? Hey, ain't no excuses. Real you know talk. What I'm saying? Real yeah. talk. Yeah. So so okay. All right. So so you do wait. Um, and so for, for the actors, I guess this would be the question just for inspiring actors, people that just want to get in the game um, and they preparing for, uh, you know, they script. Mm -hmm. All right. You get your script. What is your day to day after you receive your script? Well, typically I would read the full body of work. Um, no less than maybe about five or six times. You know what I'm saying? So you can understand you read it. You read it each time for for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. But once you fully understand what you're reading, then you start going through your steps, uh, with your, with your character overall objective with, gotcha. you know what I'm saying? And then, um, then you go from scene, your scene to scene, and then you break the scene down into the steps. What's your, your overall objective? What's the scene objective? Who is your substitution? What's your inner monologue? Uh, what's your doings? Um, missing some steps right now. Um, but you go through all these steps for each scene so you can know um, what your purpose is in, in each scene. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And your each scene, it has to feed your overall objective. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? So if your overall objective, overall objective is to get power, say in this scene, I need you for information. My scene objective would be to make you my ally. 
Why? To get power. That's going to feed my overall objective. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Make you my ally, get information, because my overall objective is to get power. Wow, that's hard, You know hard, what I'm bro. saying? And then I go in my real life, and I'm like, who do I need power from in my real life? You know what I'm saying? So then I apply either that person or that situation to that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And this is how you own the character. This is how you own the character. Wow, bro. Yeah. That's a good and then insight. You get so, and then you get so good at it because... Um, like you try to write these steps down, and that's the way that you're supposed to do it. But you get so good at the, that the steps become second nature to yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? Like you really don't need to write it down no more. I can look at a piece of paper, or and then I can pick out like um, what what's most obvious to me in those steps. Whether it's my substitution, my inner inner monologue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I work with that. That's you know what dope. I'm saying? That's Especially dope. if I got a little amount of time. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's dope, bro. Like, and, and it's so important to 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 get this game. You feel me? Because no, the industry ain't gonna do nothing but get bigger and bigger. Oh yeah. And it's just important to have people that's willing to get the information so that we could, you know, what I mean, build quality actors. You know what I mean in the city, bro. So definitely appreciate you for for dropping them jewels. Um, in terms of like you on set, right? And you got your script or whatever, but improv, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Naturally, a person is going to want to kind of, you know what I mean? Do their own thing. Right. Is that di- is that based on the director or like, how does that work in terms of people allowing free range for improv? Like, how does that work? Um, typically, like I said before, you usually when I, me personally, I take risk and risk always have panned out for me. Um, in a good way so you take that risk you know what i'm saying if you feel like it's something that needs to be implemented you know what i'm saying you take that risk on the next take let the director say hey hey i don't please don't add that you know what i'm saying keep the way it is in the lines you say okay mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but typically anybody that hire me they hire me because they know i'm going to improv gotcha. and i'm going to make this shit my own gotcha. you know what i'm saying that's dope so, yeah. that's dope so um some of the i guess Fun is people to work with. Um, it's a lot of people that's popping right now um, in the city. Uh, if you can, bro, just name some of the people that you enjoy working with in the city um, thus far. Uh, of course, my team, A Line Cinema. We have a, we a. Hey, I think we um we have fun and we create and we and we film a movie on the side. Movie on the side. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I swear we have we have a whole bunch of fun, bro. I like working with Moolah. I like uh like working with um uh, Mina. Um I like working with Mina because she it, she she trusts my input. You know what I'm saying? Even like with her movie, she allowed me to sit in on some of the edits and she allowed me to fight for some of those scenes that I wanted to stay in the movie. You know what I'm saying? Like they was gonna take the rape scene out of the movie. I'm like, no, we need that scene mm-hmm. in there. You know what I'm saying? It it feeds the character. We need to know what type of beast he is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um so those are people I like to work with in the city. Outside the city, though, um, I like working with uh, Steve-O and uh, Swift out in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Um, they pretty much doing what we're doing here, but just out there in Milwaukee. Gotcha. Um, those guys, too, man, they pretty much let me have my free range and, you know, uh, lean on me for for, for uh, suggestions or any type of help. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? No I doubt. appreciate that. No yeah. doubt, no doubt. Yeah. In terms of uh in terms of like sex scenes and kissing scenes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um me personally, bro, I don't know if I could be an actor. I don't know if I can handle all that. You feel me? But you know, it just seemed like y'all be keeping y'all composure and keeping shit super professional. Um, which is great. But but if you can, bro, just elaborate on your first, I guess, you know what I mean, scene like that or whatever, and then also give some tips to, you know, upcoming actors and actresses or whatever, and, you know, whenever they doing a scene like that. Um, So the first the first time I, I had pretty much had the mindset that you had to, like, man, I don't know how I'm going to be able to contain, contain myself. You know what For I'm real. saying? So we're, like, we're going to have a full moment of transparency right now. <laughs> One of the moments... When my man stripping up, I'm like, man, what are you doing? We out here in our boxes, baby. It's time to, it's time to stand up. Straight You're out up. here, and baby. You tripping. Straight you know what up. I'm saying? <laughs> but no, um, you, um, you, you try to discuss boundaries with the person that you're doing it with, what you okay with, what you're not okay with. You know what I'm saying? We're going to make this as real as possible. You know what I'm saying? Um, and just respect people 
as people. Like, think of a, the lady as your mom or your sister or mm-hmm. some a woman that you care about. You know what I'm saying? And and give them that courtesy. You oh, know definitely. what I'm saying? And 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 have another ask them. Hey, look, do you want you need another woman in a room with you? You know what I'm saying? Would that make you feel better? Would that make you feel comfortable? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, we try to make it as real as possible. No you know doubt. What I'm saying? No doubt. No doubt. Without being real, You're straight up. Right. <laughs> no, for real, for real. Um, uh. Last time you was here, we was uh actually sitting down with um uh some some great people out in California, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um and, and y'all had an opportunity to sit down, um you know basically talking about you know the first lady of BMF uh docu uh biopic biopic I'm mm-hmm. sorry yeah um and just looking at you know the 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 relationship and the the the, the tightness you know what I mean with 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 Tonisa. As to where, like, she really see your 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 potential. Like, she really rock with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's big. You feel me? Considering who she is, that's major. Um, if you can, bro. Like, how did y'all build that relationship, bro? And and what role, you know, what I mean, do she play in your life? You feel me? Just in where you at right now, and, and knowing that she got all of these relationships. You know what I mean, and all of that, and and wisdom and everything. Like, what's your relationship like? That's easy, man. Um, so it started with the BMF stuff, man. Um, she was real, like approachable, personable person. You know what I'm saying? Um, she knew what I was trying to go for. We just stayed in contact, and it's like we just became family. I don't, even, I couldn't. Even, whenever she called me, I'm there. Whenever she, you know what I'm saying, and vice versa. It's like. We just became family and just tight and just stand on business. Outside of that, I can say this too. She she makes sure she keeping me polished. She makes sure I do the right thing. She making sure I handle my business. Um, she put me in the right rooms, connect me with the right people. Um, man, she make make sure she makes sure I smell my flowers. Hey, look, man, real talk. You know what I'm saying? It's I don't know. It's like the big sister that I didn't know I needed. You know Real what talk. I'm saying? Uh, and I should not. I love her to death. Real it talk. It ain't nothing. Not, you know what I'm saying? You can't. You can't. You can't pay me to to betray that woman. Real you know talk. No, that's real. Yeah. And, and and just to have it sound like because you said she keep you polished, meaning a person that's keeping you on point. On point. So, um, that's keeping you sharp, right? Mm-hmm. And then you said she also putting you in certain rooms. So this is a person that's keeping you sharp, knowing that when you get in the room, your sharpness is what's going to, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And like that, that's just 100. You feel me? And the same thing, like you look back at the movies, like what T said, um, you forget me that she risked her reputation. She put her name on the line for us. Same thing she doing with me. So I don't see like... At, I don't see it no different. Like if a person willing to put you in front of million dollar people, yeah, multi millionaires, and let you speak, they must see something in you. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? You don't. You don't. You don't risk your name. You know what I'm saying for no dummy. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? Real so, talk. So, trust me. I, I see it. I notice it, and I most definitely appreciate it. Yeah, definitely, man. Shout out to Tonisa, man. Um. We seen y'all, man. I, I want to say it was this summer, man. We seen y'all giving back. Uh, book bag. It was beginning going into the school year for the for the for the kids. Yep. We seen y'all giving back uh, school supplies at the uh, Mathis Center. Mm-hmm. Um, man, how important is like you know giving back and philanthropy? Because the higher that you go, um, of course, the more money. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, more fame, and, and sometimes that can disconnect you from the people. Right. You know what I mean? How important is it? for you to stay grounded and stay connected to the people and make sure that these youngins, you know, got the basics for them to perform good in school and just all that. So I got to kind of give you the backstory on that. Make sure I stay on track too. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I got somebody else in my life too. Um, Jermaine Jackson, he from Detroit, Michigan, former NBA basketball player, grew up in my neighborhood. It was like my first person that I seen that, that I could uh, touch in my life that I seen mm-hmm. that could go far in life. Yeah. Um, He's another person that I'm blessed to have in my life. Um, he like, man, you got to do this. You have to do these type of things. You know what I'm saying? What you need. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? My, 
whatever I got. You know what I'm saying? All my resources. You know what I'm saying? I tap into them. You know what I'm saying? And um, he pushed. He made sure that happened. You know what I'm saying? So along with him and Silent Heart, which is uh, Tonisa and uh, Judge Greg Mathis and Puma and LaFrance, which is Lamelo's line, because he he also um he manages Lamelo now. He's uh, oh Lamelo Ball. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. so that's LaMelo Ball yeah. brand that you got on right now? Yeah. If you just sit up a little bit, if you can, and just, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh that's hard. Yeah, that's so hard. most definitely. So um, he's real big on that. You know what I'm saying? So he poured that into me like, bro, I don't care what you do. You have to give back to them kids, man. You got to give back to them kids. So whatever it is, man, if it's your time, I get my resources. And you know, make it happen. You make you call all the plays, and I'm gonna do my part. You know what I'm saying on my end, Definitely. and um, supply and and drinks. They have also have a drink company, so all those all those entities pitched in and made that beautiful thing happen. So, and, and as far as giving back to the to the kids, bro, I wasn't a kid that wasn't. My mom didn't always have um, the money to do certain things, and I had friends that had less than what I had. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So as you get older. You start to realize and look back at them and like, dang, them kids didn't, they didn't have a choice, you know what I'm saying, in the matter. You know, if they, they could have got the final things, they would have. So you just want to give back to the kids. So Absolutely. that's one less thing that they have to worry about when they go to school is a book bag or some pens or some pencils. And that's just, that's just the basics, you know real what I'm talk, saying? Real talk, real talk, yeah. man. Definitely salute to you for that, bro, and everybody that played a part in that whole thing, man. Um, That gym, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I, I see you. I see you be turning up on the fitness side of things. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, man, talk talk a little bit about that. Do you got your own like like company, or are you just a gym head that just gotta you know stay in the gym and stay fit? So I, I'm a I'm a gym rat, bro. Um, something that I picked up accidentally in my thirties. Like man, it's like it's something that I gotta do. But now I'm working with a group of guys that we get. We call it the morning crew. And we led by uh, my guy, uh, Blair. And, um, man, this guy is my, my size, bro, but he's the strongest motherfucker in the whole group. I'm talking about the guys that's, that's bigger than both of us. He's my size, but he's doing more than everybody. He's a fucking animal. Yeah. But he has a, a fitness um, training thing that he do called uh, Company, B Primal Fitness. Yeah. And uh, we get up every morning, six days a week, and we go in there and we get in there. It's a group of, at the at, on the... On the slow days, maybe like four or five of us, but on the on the busy days, like ten or fifteen of wow. us. We yeah. in that motherfucker going in and support. It ain't nothing but love. Ain't no backbite. Ain't, you can't get a better group of brothers and that want to see each other. You know what I'm saying? Achieve their goals yeah. and win. And man, we fuck with each other outside of that motherfucker. Man, it's just all love, bro. That's love, bro. Yeah, that's love. Yeah. Oh, oh, and I oh. think, and I mm-hmm. not to cut you no, off. you good. I think, um. I think every man needs that type of peer group. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's positive, you need that. Because we, we we bounce the stuff off each other too. Like, man, what you think about this? What you think? Even stuff that people, we might be ashamed to talk about. It's like, damn, I'm surprised you brought that up. But shit, you know what I'm saying? Hey, this is what I would do in that situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, definitely, bro. Because uh, I'm, I'm one of them people to the belief where, you know, women... They got a support system, most definitely, and, and they support system goes beyond even just they 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 friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, the government is their support system mm-hmm. at base. Like if all else fails, you got the government. Oh yeah, fact. you know what I mean. Men, we don't got that out. You know what I mean, and barely got people to really talk to and build with. You know what I mean. So uh, I, I definitely think that that's a, a a pivotal thing that you just mentioned, and, and, and men. Uh, having that that group where you could just you know what I mean build with like minded individuals and, mm-hmm. and and express some of those you know what I mean things that you may be going through on a day to day for sure for sure. Um, but he, but here's the, but here's the kicker to that too. Now you got all these different guys and we all don't do the same things in fucking life. So now you got a networking group too. You know what I'm saying? Like yes, shit, sir. this motherfucker might do this. This motherfucker might do that. This he might be a lawyer. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? And we all can help each other. For you know sure, what I'm saying? For sure for yeah. sure. That's hard. Um, on the on the, uh, I wanted to ask you on the weight tip on your bench. What what what's your what's your max? I, I got three fifteen before, but right now I had I had messed up my shoulder, so now I'm trying to build, build my way back build, up. Build yeah, my way for back sure, up. For sure, for sure, man. Three fifteen, though. Yep. Yes, All right, sir. so uh, if you can, bro, compare like the independent filmmaking, uh, as opposed to Hollywood business and talent wise. Okay, so the business wise, they have a way bigger budget. 
which means that buys you time and it buys you resources. You know what I'm saying? So, whereas on an independent budget, um, everything is, you know what I'm saying, much, much more smaller. Um, you got people on the independent, independent side, when you got one job, you're really doing 10 jobs. So mm. Yeah, yeah, you know that makes sense, yeah. And so when you're doing 10 jobs, something is going to, something is going to get slighted. Something is going to get shorted somewhere. Um, they just have more more toys and more resources. That's the to me. That's about the about the only thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's the only difference. Is that they just got more. It's like a record label, like being an independent artist, yeah. and, yeah. and for sure. That's 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 the only that's the only difference. But everything is pretty much it's pretty much it's pretty much the same to me. Most yeah. definitely, most definitely. Yeah. Um, one of your one of your popular movies, man, or the most one of your most popular movies is uh, If I Can't. Uh -huh. Um, had a lot of people going crazy, man. Like. Fan wise, mm -hmm. you feel me? What was the reaction from the people uh, in regards to that particular film? Man, when you got people that's making a they thumbnail or their profile picture, your picture, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And all type of stuff. I got people in that talking about they baby, my baby. Uh, <laughs> man, it's just it's been wild. Bro. What's the craziest thing you got in the DM, bro? If you can remember. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. A whole bunch of news, a whole bunch of twerking. You know, just you say, typical yeah. shit. You straight know what up. I'm yeah, straight yeah. up, straight up, straight up. Um uh you okay, you already uh kind of touched a little bit on some of your favorite uh, you know, people to work with, you know, here or whatever. But I guess my next question is in movies, you always got the hero role and you always got the villain role. Right. You know what I mean? Um do you enjoy being a hero or the villain? Which which one do, are you more comfortable with playing? I want to be. I like to be the villain. Why? Because it, to me, it gives you more. It gives you more nuances to work with. If you're the hero, it's just pretty cut and plain. Yeah. I'm the hero. I have to save the day. But if I'm a fucked up person, we got to figure out why I'm fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm going to do fucked up shit for fucked up reasons. You know what I'm saying? But to, in my mind, it's justifiable. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like the Joker wouldn't just, he would he was he was crazy, but hey, y'all the motherfuckers that's crazy. Not me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I think that's, I, I like to play it. I like playing that. That's an interesting perspective, bro. Mm -hmm. And then in my mind, I just feel like the villain role is the most popular role. And I say that because the reality is, is people love bullshit. Like, like you know what I mean? We, the worst shit that we can see is the most exciting shit that we can see. And so when you say a hero, like they just got this, you yeah. know, simple role. It's like, you don't know what the fuck this, what the villain might do. And the, and the, and the other thing to that too is, if you call with this shit, you can make the motherfucker feel sorry for the villain. Wow. If you really call, you can make a motherfucker feel sorry for that villain and understand your plight. So that's hard. For sure, for sure. Um, how has barriers to the film, uh, like to the filmmaking, uh, changed recently, uh, as opposed to Hollywood and, and independent? Like, how have some of those things like changed? Because we're looking at like Tubi right now, and more people are taking that route like more people is just it's like the game like the music but i keep comparing it because we're talking about a transition right you know what i mean from what it was to what it is today so if you can like like talk about some of them barriers uh and filmmaking that's changed recently i mean it most definitely has changed for the change for the better it's easy for anybody to to put their film on on a, on a um, platform whereas back in the day it's like you heard, you knew it was indie films, you know what I'm saying? But not so much. It, it wasn't, they wasn't really nowhere to put them at or see them at, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So that has most, that, that has changed. Like you see people creating film every day because it's so fucking easy. Really like tough. it's a premiere every two or three, two or three weeks, you know what I'm saying? So, or every, it's, it's a three premieres every weekend, yeah. I should say, you know what I'm saying? So. It's easy. Straight up. Yeah. Do you see, do you think people will get burnt out? Like, do you see, like, the, like in Detroit, do you see the film 
Like, do you see it getting burnt out by so many people just waking up saying that they just want to do it now? No. Nah, um, it will if people keep on creating the same content. There you go. You know what I'm saying? If you keep on creating the same content, people going people gonna to get tired of it and they're going to go elsewhere. And so my next question is, do the lack of resources stop you from stepping outside the box and creating different films? Because you got people that do the same gangster movies because they in Detroit and they like, shit, you know? For one, that's what sells. That's what people like right now. If it was something else, people would be doing it. If it wasn't gangster, if it was library films, or you know what I'm saying, people would be shooting that. So that's that's one. Two, it's, it's lack of exposure. They don't, they, that's all they know. They don't know nothing else. They don't pick up a book and read, you know what I'm saying? Even if it's you know what I'm saying? You have to you have to expose yourself to different things, different different cultures, um, different ways of, of life. You know what I'm saying? You have to go and experience life yourself, um, and that's that's what helps bring my character. I'm 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 a well lived person. I feel like you know what I'm saying. I've been I've done a lot in my lifetime. You know what I'm saying? For sure. In a amount of time. So I think that's what it is, bro. It's okay. like. It's, you have to expose yourself to more things. You got to go hear different people's stories. You know what I'm saying? To even create different ideas. Most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely, man. Well, once again, bro, it was a it was a pleasure and an honor to have you, bro. Um, man, wish you the best on everything that, that that's coming up. And if you can, real quick, man, just tell the people what to expect uh, from you ending out this year and going into 2024. Uh, well, I got I got. A, a lot of uh, projects slated to uh, be filmed, but um, expect more business from me. I'm going to most definitely be on my business shit. You know what I'm saying? Outside of just being an actor, uh, with producing and distributing, um, directing, writing, uh, marketing. Uh, I'm That's what I'm going to be on. I'm going to be on a whole lot of business. Straight uh, up. Yeah. Straight up, man. You heard it here, man. Post to the culture. Yeah. Let's get it. Yeah, and I just wanted to shout out to man, uh, my team, A Line Cinema, J Bird Entertainment. Um, I want to shout out JJ, uh, Pur- the Purple Goat, a Francais for keeping a nigga fly. A fly. Um, shit, what, am I missing somebody? Um, yeah, most definitely the drinks. Uh, and shit, everybody who been rocking with us, man. Um, look forward to all our projects that we got coming out. Uh, scripts. Um, Kinds and Cougars, and uh, we on we all on business 2024. Yeah, yeah and I just wanted to shout out to man uh, my team A Line Cinema, J Bird Entertainment. Um, I want to shout out JJ, uh, Pur- the Purple Goat, a Francais for keeping a nigga fly- a fly. Um, shit, what, am I missing somebody? Um, yeah, most definitely the drinks. Uh, and shit, everybody who been rocking with us, man. Um, look forward to all our projects that we got coming out. Uh, scripts, um, cars and cougars, and uh, we on we all on business. Two thousand twenty-four. Yeah.